Yo, yo, what's good, guys? Um, I just gotta get the link sent out to people real quick. Give me one moment. How's everyone doing? Is anyone trading CPI? I'll give my thoughts in a moment on DPI. I'm not I'm not playing this, but can you guys hear me all right? Type one in chat if you can hear me all right. Also, um, for you guys who want to talk to me and ask me questions, it's it's harder for me to um, it's harder for me to type in Discord stuff some stuff. So if you guys have questions that are a little more loaded, feel free to ask me them here, and I'll try I'll answer them because it's going to be easier for me to explain in voice. Um, I just want to make that clear. Um, so for CPI, um, here's other things that happen. I'll just outright say it. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna play this. So eventually, I think we get down here. Okay, that's like my ultimate target. But for CPI, I'm low key kind of bullish. I think something like this could happen. Okay. That'd be about almost 90 points up there and then big rejection. After we get this, okay, obviously if we do get a bullish CPI candle here, I would not want to fade this. Um, okay, so we might get higher, but this is kind of the first target that I'm looking at right here. Um, if we reject it, great. If we don't and go through it, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see will this be used as support, and I'll look for long setup out of this. Okay, ultimately, I, I think we're going to end up hitting sell side at some point. Um, okay, um, but yeah, this is kind of just my prediction. I don't really, I, I'm not playing this. This is just like my fun little game I play. I see if I uh, get it right. Uh, my spring break was great. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Towards the end of the week, it got a little, I feel like I was there a little too long, but... But yeah, this is my prediction. Um, I really like, I think we're going to eventually hit this, but I don't know. I don't know if CPI will be bad enough to go straight down, um, unfortunately. Okay, this is what I really want. But I think, I don't know. My, I think this look is more plausible. A 
Flip, are you talking to me? I'm reading chat a little bit. Yes, mean. So if you're in another country and you have different times, always switch yours to Eastern time. Uh, so go to this button down here. Always switch yours to New York time. Okay, that's the, the and then just follow those macro times. Okay, because the macro times for Eastern will not work here. Oh, that's just important. Honestly, this is my main prediction. Once we get up here, I don't know if we're going to reject right away, but I don't know. We'll see. So CPI is in about three minutes. So you're gonna see me. You're gonna hear me say this a lot of time uh, when it actually happens. Um, let me put. Yeah, I can make out how future trading work. So I can make a. Uh, what am I trying to say here? I don't think I'm allowed. Short or long? Um, <laughs> please, I'm not saying anything. Please do not gamble here. If you want to try a demo, try a demo long. That's my guess. And if you do want a demo, set a demo long. And if you're wrong, put like a limit right here. Just in case you're wrong. But so I'm going to be watching this in live time. At 829 or 830 right before this happens, you're going to see us wake one way and we're going to go the other way. Most likely. So I'll be able to tell if we're bearish or bullish before it happens. Um, right now, I would probably, if I'm bullish, okay, what I would expect is a um, wick under here. So something like this. And then up there. Okay. But I don't know, it's kind of risky. I don't know if you guys saw, but Alliant Capital yesterday, he posted, anyone want to explain to me why people hype up ICT and it is a cult? Looks like most basic things ever of finding supply and demand, supports and resistance, but slapping a fancy name on it and making a cult. What am I missing? And I said, you're missing nothing. It sucks. Don't use ICT. It made me lose all my money. And I got like, the comments were hilarious in the post. Yeah, if you're demoing, try demo long. That's what I would do. Even though I really, really think, like, I have a prediction in my Discord saying that we will hit sell side. Okay, way down here. I just don't know if it's going to be yet. Like, in the back of my head, I hope this is bearish. Um, but I don't know. I'm not really trying to guess. Wow. Damn. Okay, so um Okay. 
So we kind of moved down here, which makes me think we're we might wake back up here. Um, so again, what I said is the opposite move. Um, yep, there it is. Okay. So my my retracement was a little too little too low. <laughs> So we did retrace down to go back up. My retracement was a little too low. Um, we we took out we took out south side and then pumped right here. Okay, so this would be my target now. Okay, so we should hit this. This is where I said set your limit if you're long. So yeah, I got the right idea, but again, we wicked a little lower than I thought, which is my bad. We should hit the target in a second. But, um, yeah, it's, I don't even know what CPI came in at. I'm about to check. see something here um, also if you're not watching NQ let's see what NQ did so NQ did not hit this high let me check so I like watching that see if NQ hits a high and, and maybe why it doesn't if you go to like the five Um, so NQ or yes hasn't taken out this high okay YM it looks like it did um, okay look with the YM see how it took out this high so what I do is I draw again you draw a vertical line at 1425 it looks like 1430 okay see how and then also wait I'll actually draw a horizontal line someone showed me you could do this look okay see how this same time on NQ and ES um, Okay, do you guys see how, um, so do you see how I mark a vertical line here, right? This is the high at this time. So we hit it on YM, we just never hit it on Q and YS. So what does this tell me? This tells me there's a massive bearish divergence here, okay? Which is good for me if I wanna hit sell side, okay? So again, my prediction is I think we go at some point and hit sell side down here, right? Um, and also another thing is, so here's another thing, as much as I want to short, wait, what the hell? Okay. This is kind of weird. Um, okay. So this is a little odd because, um, on my four hour, it says we hit this high. Oh wait, now it doesn't. Okay. That's weird. So. I don't know if you just saw if you if you zoom back, but it said we hit the high in four hour, but we didn't, and now it's saying we didn't. Um, so here's here's another lesson I want to go over that the ICT doesn't talk about too much. Okay, um, even though, okay, even though, uh, also by the way, I do have this opening new opening gap chart up here. Okay, um, 
I will be watching this and referencing a little bit. So if you don't have a second chart with those open, then I would maybe check that out. Um, we, we went above the new week op opening gap, and now we're bo back below it again. So I'm bearish as long as we're below it. Okay. Um, Um, so yeah, basically what I want to say is see see so see in the four hour right if we go in the four hour um, Do you see how we have this giant like this for like up this for that like up, okay? If we draw a premium to discount right and, and we know we have sell side down here okay, If we draw a premium to discount Um Treat this like I know this is not a supply zone. This is bad. I say this is a supply zone, but it's really not. Pretend this is like a supply zone. Okay, it technically is because it's a. It's not like an actual supply zone, but it, there's a bunch of leftover sellers in here. That the algos want to sell at in a in a premium range. Okay, why do they want to do that? It's because it's in premium. Okay, it's better prices for them to sell, so they want to sell here, right? So they we know there's gonna be leftover orders. So the other day. Um, I was texting my buddy. I go, I said, I'm looking for short as long as we hit, uh, let me delete all these, one of these highs. So if you guys just watch my buy model video, okay, what do I, what do I kind of teach? I teach to complete the buy model, we get this curve, and then we re hit the highest old high. So you can see, like right here, um, here's the curve, okay, but why don't we hit this high? The reason why I would say we didn't hit this high is because of us the higher time frame. So the higher time frame, we're still technically in that four hour fair value gap, right? So I'm not really expecting to hit that high. I don't really care if we do or not. All I said to my my buddy was, okay, as long as you hit any of these highs, I will look for a short. I didn't care whether it was this one or this one. And the reason why I say that is because in this circumstance, we're still in this giant four hour fair value gap, and I know there's possibility of inducement, but the buy model to complete is not as probable in this giant four hour free rally gap because there could still be leftover sell orders that stop us from getting to this wick. Okay, if this was not a four hour bearish free rally gap, it would be different. But because this is, it would. Now let me say this. If we end up breaking above this four hour free rally gap and we stayed above it, but maybe we got a long setup out of here, then my target would be this. Okay, and that's because if you watch Juicy's video, um, Yes, I think that's around CE. If you watch Susie's video, yeah, it's CE. Uh, you want to break above a bearish river rag gap, and then you want to see use the support, and that tells you that okay, now we're in a buy model. We should see this high taken out, okay? But we didn't really get that yet here. Um, we didn't really get that yet here, and this was still an old fair rally gap, so I don't really care which high we hit. So like in the lower time frame. I didn't care what high we hit as long as I said literally as long as we hit one of these highs I would still take a short if we got it and you can see we end up getting a short here is it retraced to no so you probably wouldn't have just entered okay and I didn't enter this I think this is overnight yes yeah, at 3 a.m. okay and people trading London they would not have gotten an entry in this unless they chased and their risk reward is probably bigger than normal but because we are in this giant um, because we we're in this giant fair rally gap to the left, I'm not. I don't really care which high we hit of these. As long as we hit one of these, um, then I'll look for a short setup. Yo, what's up, Leo? Read Discord chat. Uh, yeah, I got you. Um, are you asking me about the minis? The mini contracts are fifty. The micros are five dollars. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can. Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very honest. Um, I just trade MES, and um, I just know that it moves five dollars per point. I'm pretty sure you need at least two hundred fifty to trade MES, which is on margin. For ES, I think it's like it's much more than that. I think it's like maybe thousand, maybe seven hundred fifty, something like that. But basically, all you gotta know is if you're trading MES, um, like right here. Every point's gonna move five dollars. Yeah, so here's what I'd say. If you want to trade MES, which I would recommend, put five hundred dollars in, trade the MES, do not go below two fifty, whatever you do. And make your max stop like fifty dollars, which is five points on MES. So if you put 500 in, do not go below 250. I'm saying that like you can control that. If you're, again, it's, you got to be skilled to do that. Um, or you got to put in time not to go below 250. But I would recommend not going below 250 if you trade the MES. Um, so you guys are probably wondering what I short this for a minute up right here. Um, and I'm going to say no. Why? Because... To me, I'm going to wait for structure to form. So what I tell a lot of people in my Discord is, as we get these giant wicks, you kind of want to wait for better structure to form. This is not good structure yet, in my opinion. So we got nice uptrend structure here. This is just kind of, okay, we get a giant wick. Um, and what and usually if I was not live trading, what I would do is I would literally set an alert at both these spots. So I'll literally just set an alert, see which one we hit, and then I'll start looking for setups. Because we're in this giant range right now. Yeah, so the the video where you to look for a buy money, you want to break above the fair value gap and support. And and someone tweeted something the other day saying how important this was. Um, when I talk about my buy model curves, um, when I talk about my buy model curves, I'll link the video in a second. Um, I may hit the link in my Discord, unfortunately, because I'm not logged in to my YouTube on OBS, so I don't know if I can. Um, but let me try to find an example of what I was talking about. So basically a market maker model, it's something like, here wait, I'll actually just pull up the YouTube video because why not? Okay, it's this one right here. Okay, so this is the, this is the pattern obviously. Uh, this is a little blurry. Okay, so here's the pattern, right? And usually what happens to complete the models, we get up to here. So here's the sell side of the curve, here's the reversal, here's the buy side, right? And this doesn't show it, but it's when you get something like like this so we have a bearish fair value gap here we break above that bearish fair value gap right here and we use it as support okay and that's kind of what makes it a buy model and tells me what's going higher so this is the juicy video and i do have it linked in my discord i linked it in like the gold nuggets um i linked it in the gold nuggets channel And basically what it says is something like this. So if I'm looking for a reversal down here, right? I'm looking for like a target or some sort of liquidity to be hit. Um, here's what I look for. I look for, see how this is a big bearish fair value gap right here? See how we, we balance it, we reject it. And then now we have a candle close above this. So this tells me when we break this, when we break above this fair value gap, that likely tells me, okay, we broke above this uh, intermediate term high in this fair value gap. We 
we grab liquidity. Okay, so the liquidity grab or the liquidity purge was actually pretty equal highs here, uh, but like we did still grab liquidity. Okay, so we still purge liquidity right here. But see how we break above this for a rally gap. Now you want to see this use of support. What does this tell me? This tells me that we're gonna go and hit some sort of higher liquidity. Okay, so like this would be my target. And we actually retook liquidity again before actually hitting the target. Um, oops, we 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 hit re hit liquidity again before hitting the actual target. Um, like you can see down here, we did. But it still shows you when we break above these old favorite value gaps. That tells you, okay, now you want to look for buys, right? And you can see we have this nice displacement, which I'm sure is like a single five minute frame value gap, and we end up bouncing out that. And it just hit discount. And then your target for this is again, people don't know how partials work, but I would have sold partials here, okay, this high, and then I would have left the rest for here, which never would have hit. I would have gotten south to break even. But this is the key part. When we break above this fold for a value gap, okay, that's the key part. Same with this. See this fair value gap right here? See how we never close under it after breaking this intermediate term high? Um, that is very important. And what's the, what's the difference with right here? Yes, we do close over it. We do close above it. But in this leg, okay, this leg right here, we never took any liquidity down here versus when we close above it, this one, right, this candle right here, this 2024 candle, we did take liquidity right here. See how we took liquidity? Or we, I'm saying took liquidity. That's a, that's not the right, we, you gotta say we purged liquidity. So we purged liquidity here, um, which is right here. And that's why I see this use of support versus this situation. You don't see this use of support because there's no liquidity purged. But yeah, I linked it in ICG Gold Nuggets. Go watch it, it's like an hour. I'm probably gonna make a little shorter one, but I'm gonna give them credit. Does anyone know which trading view chart provider is best for S&P slash US 500? Um, I'm not sure. When I use US 500, I just use US 500.f. Good, seven, eight. Uh, it does not look like this is updated, which I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, US 500 would be the one that I would use. Um, and it's from currency.com. I think currency and capital.com are both good. The other ones, I'm not, I have no idea. And these numbers will not match ES. The US 500 ones do, but I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it's trading right now. I don't know why. They must have halted or something. And I do not use XBX 500. But uh, you definitely can. By the way, if you guys haven't switched over contracts, get off ESH and use ESN. Black Bull stuck since yesterday. Oh, is that what US 500 thought that's about? Yeah, so Black Bull, this. Blackwell markets apparently that's stuck as you said. I'm not sure why. It's probably for other things too. What is happening? Okay, geez. Um, so we are pumping a little more. I thought this is probably not a bad long here. Um, and then your target would be this high. And then your stop would be below here. Uh, I just kind of missed that. I probably should could have taken that. It's whatever though. Um, and the reason why um, I like this is because remember on the hourly chart even though we had the SMT divergence here um, 
there's still I would still probably want to hit this high and then I'll look for another short again so if we hit this high what happens we're still in this for a value gap we'll look for a short um, it doesn't matter if we don't get it because I would still look for a short nonetheless because we do have a SMT right here uh, but it would just make the most sense if we went back and hit this high and then maybe we got a short uh, my remember my prediction was we had went down my wick is really tiny though. My wick is like right here. And my prediction was we'd go like this. Um, but I'd want to see how you react to this first. And if anyone long this, you probably would have just gone stop break even. Okay, doesn't really matter. See, I, I love these entries because see how we hit internal liquidity right here? Okay, I would have just taken a partial there. And then your stop would just be a break even, right? Pretty simple. Um, it's also a three minute. Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. But you can see this is the, the break of structure right here. If you break this with displacement, then this would be your long. So far, we do not have a close under. Okay, so see how I do not have a close under? That is very important to me to note. Um, doesn't really mean I'm bearish yet. Okay, this is still bullish. Now the target would be right here. Times eight fifty two. All right, there's three minutes on market open, so um, I was I was in a one on one with somebody last yesterday, and I was explaining how uh, yeah this is recorded, and I was explaining how a lot of people don't know when to take partials. So with my trading style alone, um, let's say I get in a fair value gap up here. And I see equal highs right here, right? Even though, even though like this is okay, this is external liquidity, I think we might hit it. Okay, even though we have that up here, these are equal highs, we bounce off fair value gap, these are equal highs, okay? So why would you not take off, like I, for me personally, I like to take off most of my position as soon as you hit these equal highs, this internal liquidity. Um, and the reason is because something like this, we could hit them and then go way back down, hit the trailing stop and then pump back up again I know like um, and I know it's kind of tough sometimes like especially if you do use trailing stops trailing stops gonna be stupid because you'll get trailing stopped and those pump right back up um, but you just got to kind of deal with it and it's just something sometimes there's just nothing you can do to be honest So like again, we never closed under this. This is still bullish. If you long this, then again, this is three nine. This is still a five handed move. To this wick up here, this is still a five handed move. I'd probably be out of 50% 50, 50 of the position here. And then maybe other 50% has to stop and break even down here. And then the other target would be up here. Yeah, so usually you do not want the body closing past past the fair value gap and this situation didn't also can someone tell me why I think we're gonna hit buy side I literally just explained it using the market maker video or not there's a certain fair value gap that I did not watch or did I do not have marked here that told me we were bullish can someone tell me what it is
you're you're one you're one point off Goonie. It's not eight thirty one. You're one minute off. Eight thirty-two. Yep, exactly. So this right here, I did not draw this out for you guys because I just kind of keep them ahead. I just drew this one out because this is what most new people are gonna be like. Oh, for Vega. This is the reason, though. Okay, when we break above this with this placement, what does this tell me? This tells me that there's a high probability we're hitting buy set up here. Um, and when I saw this, that's why I kind of marked buy set up here. Um, so yes, that is exactly correct. So even though new guys will be like, oh, okay, we have this fair value gap here. I totally, I totally get there's a fair value gap right here. But to me, this ideally is the main reason for this. Okay. Eight thirty two. Yeah, this is where I start looking for acceleration. I think a few people in my Discord caught this. Oh, SCT is tweeting right now. Let's see what he's tweeting. I, I by the way I do not have I just saw someone link it. I do not look at his tweets. Um I like to review people's tweets with them. Um, let's see here. So ICT tweeted. Nope, three nine seven eight as buy side. Three nine seven eight. What the? Okay, I think he's on ESH. Yeah, so he said no. Three nine seven eight is buy side, I guess. I'm not sure where he got three nine seven eight. It looked like it was this. Um. By the way, this is still bullish order flow. Okay, a lot of people don't know how to read bullish order flow. This is still bullish. We're still above this OB. Which is a PD rate, and we're just getting into a into a fair value gap here. Um, and let's see, discount is oh, see discounts under here. So uh, again, this would not be a good fair value gap to long. Okay, and the reason why is because it's not really a discount. Um, I would have wanted I would have wanted to see acceleration here, even though this might work. Um, I would probably not take this because it, again, we're really high. The entry is already down here when I pointed this out. Um, but technically, yes, the order flow still is bullish. If we go back below this OB, then I'll maybe look. Then I'll not be as confident as we were hitting. If we were hitting buy side, okay, I'll not be confident we we're hitting this. But yeah, he said note three seven eight but as buy side. At eight twenty seven. So before CPI, he said, no, tweet it, notice buy side. And we end up going way under it, and then we pump back up to it. Um, measure CE of the long wick down to 3886 sell side. 
I have no idea what he's talking about. Eight eight six. Um. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Okay, we should hit this high in a moment. Reacting off new week opening gap low like ping pong down ping pong up down. Yeah, so I mentioned how we're back under the new week opening gap. Three nine four one buy side. Okay, so he has three nine four one noted like I do. Um he said that thirteen minutes ago. And I bet you he said it after he broke above this this Sibby. Eight forty six one minute fair value gap. Do not want to see new week of Gap high retrace. Okay. So yeah, he marked this for like gap out, like I did. Um, I don't know if he knows this is a Sibby. I mean, I'm assuming he does. He just never said it. Should hit it any moment. Just waiting for us to accelerate over this. Okay, so what do you see? We just hit the internal high, so this is where I'd take partials. I don't care if buy side is this is literally half a point. Okay, so buy side is literally a half a point up here. So I'm I'm off 90% of my position, I'm taking profit here. I don't care about this, okay? That's what some people don't realize. Some people try to hit the home run and be like, oh, we're still gonna hit this, and they hold. But what if something like this happens? Okay, you just lost five points to draw down. Five points. Even if you got in here, you just lost five points. This is why I always sell an internal, and and I was saying this the other day in my in my voice chat. See how close together these are? Three, nine, four, fifty point five. these are one point away. I don't give a shit about an extra point, okay? I am selling most of my position right here. I don't care about an extra point. It's This it only applies when these two lines are this close. Okay, when they're this close, that's when it only applies. Uh, we said one minute volume balance here at 851. Oh, yeah, I see. So he's talking about this imbalance right here. Damn. And he hasn't tweeted anything since. Three nine four one. This actually might be a little off. Let me check. No, this is three nine four zero point five. This is what I have. Okay, do you see like? Do you guys type one in chat if you understand this? Okay. I notice a lot of ICT people. They're like, oh, I'm trying to hit a home run because this is what ICT does. They do not sell at this internal high. They try to wait till this, even though this is one point away. Do you guys understand like? Who cares about the extra point, okay? I know it looks better on paper. I know it looks better if you for your execution. But if they're this way, if, you re, if they're this close, do you really care about an extra point? I still think this is going to hit, okay? But that doesn't mean... Why would you want to hold through five points of drawdown? You understand? Okay, good.
This is th f really algorithmic. So here's what I'm, this is obviously BPR, but when you short it, no, because we know there's still untapped buy set up here. So here's what I'd be looking for. I'd be looking for us to pump through this and then use this to support. Also remember how I said the order flow is still bullish. Okay, as long again as long as we hold this, the order flow is still bullish. Okay, why is because we're holding the order block. Okay, so what do you notice? We never got a close above this yet. Little volume bounce on here. Um, ideally, I would not want to see this drop below. Okay, so this to me right now is the low that I'm really watching. I do not want to see us go back up this low. Uh, but you can see how algorithmic this is. We have not had a close above yet. We've closed at it. We closed at it. So we just need to close above now. He's tweeted 854.1 for a value gap. So he tweeted this for a value gap. This is one PD array, by the way. Okay. This right here is a second PD array. And you know what happens if we break a third PD array, right? This is very, very important. Can you please talk about institutional order flow? What is it, how to use it? So for order flow, what I look for is order blocks, okay? So these red candles before these up moves, this is how big institutions manipulate the market. Okay, so what they do is, uh, I believe I'm saying this right. Um, yeah, so here, I'll start with what an order block is. So an order block is basically, see this red candle before this up move? Okay, this is um, an institution, I believe, getting out of a long position. And what they do is they try to manipulate the market to go back down so they can get out of break even. But by doing that, I'm pretty sure it allows them to, to move the market in the price they want. And I'm not sure if I'm explaining right, this right. This is not my idea. This is something I saw in a video one time. Um, and it was, a, it was a smart money concept video. So I'm not sure how accurate that is. But all, but he basically said these red candles for these that moves. This is their manipulation. This is how they hide it. Okay, and this isn't actually true manipulation. Okay, manipulation would be like a Judas swing. Like this would be manipulation. Us going way under here. This is more of a accumulation. Okay, this red candle is accumulation before you go up again. Uh, but yeah, basically what it is, it's a change of state of delivery. So when we get two red candles up, and then a green one, and then more up, and some people call these. Sub demand zones uh, but this is just this is an order block I guess supply and demand traders I guess is a, it's a demand zone too um, I don't want to say no it's not a demand zone because that's what they say demand zones are um, but basically this red candle before an up move and an uptrend okay it has to be an uptrend if you get a red candle before an up move and a downtrend that does that's not really an order block um, 
So like, let's see if we can find where this is an uptrend. We're looking for a downtrend. Uh, let me see if I can find one. Red candle before an up move and a downtrend. Okay, I'm not, this is a London session, there's not enough volume, but yeah, basically, again, like this right here, see this red candle before this up move? Okay, um, this red candle before this up move right here. Okay, this would be an order block. Um, and there's a lot more to them, obviously, like this one right here. And what I do is there's the open. I, I like to draw the open, and then there's a the mean threshold. So the mean threshold is basically 50% of the candle body. You do not want to see a close under this mean threshold, okay? Any close above under this 0.5 is not good. That probably means your bias is most likely wrong. Um, and it, I'm actually going to pull up a thing by... This guy on Google. There's this PDF I can link. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, okay, it's right here. Bless me. All right. So this is kind of it. Um, hopefully you guys can all see this. But do you see? So this is this support level. What this means? This is not a like this could be a support level, like a fair value gap, or this could be liquidity. Okay. So this is either liquidity. So by support level or resistance level, this is basically just a fair value gap. Maybe another order block, whatever. So an order block would be something like this. When we get a red candle. Okay, red candle um, on some support level and then up move. Okay, so this would be the order block right here. See this red line? And and I usually enter at the open and then your stop is below it. See how the stop is below it? Same thing with resistance level. This would be like a bearish for a value gap, bearish order block, bearish wick or rejection block. As soon as we get a magnitude of a move that's down after a green candle, and notice how, notice how, this is only one green candle. See how we get a green, red, green? Okay. This is important. If we get a red candle and then maybe two green candles, this would still be an order block. But if we get green, 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 okay. I mean, technically the, all those would be an order block, but it's not really an order block. An order block, you want like one to three candles usually. Um, and it's before some sort of red candle and then you get a dump down. So like right here, see this strong reaction down after this green candle of hitting this resistance level, this is what makes it an order block. If there's not really a strong reaction, then I wouldn't really use it as an order block. So it could be check right here. So look right here, this is an order block. Why is this an order block? Because we bounce off of the support level, which is the one minute for a value gap. Okay, see? Um, so we, so we bounce off this, um, so, so we bounce off this support level. Okay. This is the support level. Um, and we get a look red candle before not move order flow is still bullish. We should hit this in a moment. I'm guessing, um, but you can see this is just a clear, clear, perfect example. Um, like this red candle. This is a high, so a high probability order block and a low probability order block. Okay. Um, this giant one, this would be a high probability order block. This would be a low probability order block. And you can see this is a doji candle. It's not really defined. This one's very defined. So this shows clear manipulation right here. Just kind of saying if we hit this, should. This is where I like to see acceleration, like a big pump. Yeah, 
There it is. Okay, see how I called that before it happened? This is where you want to see the big pump. Okay, why do we see a big pump there? I bet you if I go to my footprint chart right now, we'll see a ton of volume going. See? See how, this? so this down here, I'm going to take a second to explain this. 79 delta, 203 delta, 177 delta. So this is basically buying volume. Look at the difference of delta here. See how you get this 1,125? Okay, that's insane. And and why do I expect that right here? It's because there's a bunch of sell stops right here. So we need a ton of volume to break these. That's why it happens. Okay, so we just hit my target. Um, notice how I said earlier, I said, okay, I'm gonna set alert, just wait to see which one we hit. But then I saw this, I saw this break above the SIBI, so I knew we were more likely to hit this one. Okay, as soon as you break above the SIBI. So now we broke up above this four hour high. Um, and okay, there's another ore block example. See how this is a, a green candle before a down move? Well, you got this green candle, this green candle, this green candle. So this wouldn't really be an order block in my opinion. Some people would consider it one. Um, but you got too many green candles. If this if this here was a red candle, let's say this was a red candle. Let's just pretend to cover this up. I would consider this an or, a better, a more high probability order block. If this was a red candle right here, this would be a more high probability order block. Um, but you can see we took the high in the one hour. So I'm gonna relook for shorts again. Okay. Okay, see, see right here. Um, these two green candles, both of these are be order blocks. Okay. Again, you get two green candles worth down move. The thing that makes these order blocks is this red candle right here. If this was a green candle, these would not be order blocks. Okay. I mean, maybe they would, but I just want to see them as order blocks. Okay. They would be low probability order blocks. These are high probability order blocks because of this candle here. Okay. Um, I would not really expect a rejection here, and there's the whole different reason for that. Um, this would also be a breaker block, this red candle, but don't worry about those right now. Um, okay, but these two green candles before this down move, these would be order blocks because of this red candle right here. This red candle is what makes it an order block. This was green, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, you'd have too many five, five green candles. That's not really as clear showing manipulation, in my opinion. This is also a this is also a breaker block. Um, so this red candle before this up move, this is a breaker block as well. Why is this a breaker block? It's because this is up here, it's an order block, right? If we're expecting this high to be hit, I would consider this bullish order flow. Okay, so you want to look for long up here. And you're not gonna blatantly long this, you're not gonna blindly long this, you're gonna go to the lower time frame. This is the hour. You're gonna to go to the lower time frame and you're gonna look for like a one minute or five minute long off this level and you can probably see you don't get it here right um, so that's what you do right and once we break below this it now becomes a breaker it's like using an order block as an inverse so it's like using support and resistance now this is support you want to see this be used as resistance and you can see we, we tapped into it almost perfectly um, and we use it as resistance and what makes this a breaker is we took out this high right here if we didn't take this high this would be an unmitigated breaker but I mean technically we took out this high too I don't really talk about mitigation box a lot I just refer to everything as breakers terms don't really as long as you know the concept it doesn't really matter I'm gonna check Euro S Euro. So even though we hit buy side, again, the order flow is still bullish. Okay. Would you long this for a value gap though? Absolutely not. Okay. Can someone tell me why you wouldn't long this for a value gap? Even if it works.
Sorry, give me one second. Yes, exactly. So we just took out by side. Exactly, exactly. Yes, this is recorded, DTG. So, okay. You got to you gotta start learning. Even if this works, you should not care. Okay? I don't care that this is working right now. Yes, you could have gotten three handles off this. I don't care. Okay? We just hit buy side on the higher time frame. You would not long this. It makes zero sense to long this after we hit buy side. Also, why would you long this if it already gave us entries down here that I pointed out before, right? There's no point in longing this. And, and we're in a premium on a higher time frame. If you look, we're still in premium. Okay, so we're above the 0.5. Um, here's where it gets tricky. So my prediction was I thought we would go up here and then reject. Um, that was my prediction. Okay, just because I think that doesn't mean that I'm gonna target here. It will still mean I will still look for a short from here if we get it. If we get a, the most textbook short in the world, it is still totally fine to take a short from here. Okay, I'm not really fading my prediction because my prediction changes based off what happens in this Fred Rally gap. Okay, so if I see like a textbook, textbook short here, I will take it. Um, can you? So I explained what an order block is. I will do another order block thread. I feel like order blocks, for you guys listening to that, you probably didn't fully understand what an order block is. Um, let me see something. But yeah, this is this is mainly the fair value gap I'm watching right now. Um, I'm just kind of looking for a short setup from it, right? Um, so, so here's what I'm looking for now. Um, yeah, this could be a Judas swing. Yeah, eight thirty. Eight thirty is right. Let's see, eight thirty is right. One second. Okay, eight thirty is right here. And the thing with eight thirty, what I look for with eight thirty price is. Um, you want to see it go below. If you're bullish, you want to see us go below. So honestly, if we did get a short set up here, this would probably be my first target, this 830 price. Um, and let's see if we, I'm gonna draw midnight real quick. So this is midnight as well. Same thing with midnight. You want to see us go below if you're bullish and then look for long setup above. <clears throat> we just hit buy set liquidity. Yes, we just did. Yes. Daniel, I think your stream might be a little behind. Oh, wait, no, that, never mind. That was from before. That was my bad. I'm just going to mark buy set up here just so I know where it is. Now look at, yeah, so again, we're in a higher time frame PD array. Okay, a lot of people don't understand this. We're in a higher time frame PD array, which means we're in a higher time frame for value gap. Now, what do you do from here? From here, you go to the one minute time frame or the five minute time frame and you look for a short setup out of here. You're not just blindly shorting this, right? There's no point in blindly shorting this. Even though this is a breaker block, it looks 100% textbook for a short. You're not just going to blindly short this. It makes zero sense. Um, this is where you'd go to the lower time frame and you'd be looking for a short on the lower time frame. And, and the old me, I'm going to be honest, when I first started ICT, what I used to do is I'd be like, oh, this is a breaker and a fair value gap. 
But look, this is also like a 30 point zone. So how do you know exactly where to sort? You don't, okay? You know exactly where to sort if we were to go to the lower time frame and get a setup. And the old me would have slapped this randomly and I used to get wrecked. Or I'd get stopped, it'd go a little up, above, and then it'd go towards my position. And then I tried chasing and then just didn't work out. So like in this situation, if you theoretically took this breaker in favor of that gap right here, okay? This would probably be your first target, which would be 1.83 risk reward. This would probably be your second target. Okay. Actually, your first target would probably be this for a value gap. Okay. Just in case. So I'll just say your first target is this for a value gap. Okay. Even though, like, here's your market structure shift right here. So here's your first target. See how horrible risk reward this is versus if we go to, like, the one there right now. Um, This is the risk reward right now, right? And then it would probably be down here, the CPI wick. Okay, this would be the second target, right? Um, versus if we did something like this, where we got a high inside this survey gap, and then let's say we broke a last lower low, or last higher low, then we got a short, okay? And then this is where you'd enter in like a survey gap, right? Look at this risk reward now. Your risk reward would be above this high, and then your target would be your first target would probably be 830. And look how much better the risk reward is rather than just slapping shorts randomly in the zone. It just makes zero sense. Um, but yeah, it's not my prediction. This is just what this is the framework I'm looking for and Here and I'm also going to say something else. Okay I'm still no even if we don't reject this for value gap, right? I'm gonna still have this drawn I'm gonna have mean thrust. So I'm gonna have this line up here So my prediction was We'd go up here and then we would reject so just in case, I'm going to show you my thought process right now, which I'm not really, this will be uh, good for you guys to hear. So here's, here's like my prediction buy side. Here's the fair value gap where I would take a short out of here if we got a short. Okay. If we got a short out of here, I definitely short from here. But here's the thing. Here's the one hour fair value gap. If my prediction is right. Okay, if, if I truly think we will hit this, if, if we do hit this buy side, oh my God, oops. Bro, what the hell? I just, I think I just hit my hotkey for a long accident, oops. Um, so if my prediction's right, and we do hit this buy side up here, and we do rebalance into this for value gap, can someone tell me what you would be looking for based off of this for value gap? That's only if we don't get a short from this, which I would short this if we did. Can someone tell me? So, if we do not get a short set up here, what would I be look? What would make me more confident for us hitting buy side based off of this breaker and this fair value gap? Why isn't the upper red candle this? This technically would be a breaker block here, but the when we get up here, the criteria will change. IV FVG. Yes, inverse fair value gap. Yeah. 
Yeah, so for me to be confident we are hitting this, what I look for is I look for a rip above here, and then I'd look for long, and then you'd want to see this hold the support. And I actually have a breaker block marked right now, so it would be actually be an inverse fair value gap and an inverse breaker block. Okay, so if we push above them, you would want to see this now hold the support. As soon as you push above them, we get a strong candle close of like a little above, then I'd be more confident where you're going to buy a side. But right now, I'm not super confident. All I'm doing right now is I'll look for shorts on a lower time frame setup, which we still not got. If we already had filled this for a value gap up here, if this was already balanced, um, I probably would not be looking for something like this, okay? The only reason I am is because this is a lot of left open space, so I feel like if we do get some sort of setup, it would be we rip through this and then we get a long. But again, it doesn't mean I'm looking for a long. It means I'm just watching this break here for a short right now. If we don't get a short, I just won't take anything though. So again, right now you should be in the lower time frame like the one or five and be looking for a short setup from here. Yeah, so this would be a market maker buy model if we break above this and then use this to support. And you'll know if we use it as support, if we break above this on the one hour and then get a lower time frame long setup in here, your target would be up here and that would be the completion of a buy model. A lot of people expect you to know, oh, this is a buy model from way down here. Okay, I don't really typically know if it's a buy model until we're about probably 30 or 50% of the way through the buy side of the curve. One hour candle. This is the Doji candle. Ah, uh, do you mean this? So here's the thing. Y I would not expect a short from this very gap, and the reason why I say that is because. We would already be above this for a value gap, which means what? Which means all these shorts are probably out of their shorts now, which and they're probably maybe reversing their position. Not that's not a guarantee, but as long as we, it doesn't matter. This for a value gap doesn't matter because if we go above this giant ass for a value gap, that tells me okay, we just squeeze through this. That it's not really good for shorts because that will probably give us enough pressure to go back up here. So. Again, you could still look for a low time frame short setup out of this. If we got it, I wouldn't mind taking it. It's just, I'd rather take a low time frame short setup from here. All right, I gotta post this in my index commentary in uh, my Discord. Give me un momento. Copy this.
Okay, there's still I'm I'm watching the the other time frame, and there's still no short setup yet. Um, I'm on the five minute. Again, this is my prediction, um, but again, like I said, I would still take a short if we got it here, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to take like a tiny, tiny one minute all volume balance, not even market structure short because I don't want to fade my bias that hard. I'm going to pull up the lower time frame in a second for you guys. So as someone said, the reason I marked the breaker block in the one hour, not the free value gap of the PD array, breaker block comes first as a target. So yes, technically that's right. If you ever see a fair value gap, like, above so in this situation this breaker is below this fair value gap so which one are we gonna hit first this breaker so this is the first pd array and ideally you want to see the first pd array hold so this is why you would expect this short from here and not here if we break above this breaker and above this fair value gap well then chances of this holding is very slim to none um and also you can see i marked this breaker as it lines up with the fair value gap so this still lines up with the fair value gap this whole part of the fair value gap is still on this is not rebalanced yet so this is getting rebalanced right now but i just marked the whole breaker block and see how it lines up now he is tagging the 3951 Um, oh yeah, I see his tweets. Monday, 16 minute low, 3 a.m. Yeah, I see what he's saying. So ICT thinks this is the next target, which again, this goes along with what I think and my bias and what I told you guys earlier. Okay. I wanna ask you a question. Even though my bias is bullish right now, okay? Even though I think we're gonna go hit bias it up here, also, this would be internal buy side. Would you still short from this very value gap if we got very, very textbook setup? Yes or no? type anything so someone said no because the market structure is still bullish and premium okay I would say that's not the right answer because if so while being in this for value gap if I go to like the three minute right now The, the order flow is still bullish, okay? You can see we're holding these order blocks. We have another order block here. We have another order block here. This is actually a propulsion block. Okay, the reason why this is a propulsion block is because of, see how he bottom ticked this? Okay, so there's the high. Okay, so my bias is still going according to plan. Um, as you can see, this footprint candle Okay, this is a pretty hefty, this is pretty hefty volume. This is stacked right here, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is also stacked as well. Um, so I would not be surprised if we hold held this right here, but um, obviously we just hit the target, so why would you long here in the first place, okay? This is just kind of a tool I use. I don't actually long the stacks, but okay. Anyways, order flow is still bullish as I mentioned before, damn. This is a pretty big candle. Uh, 
Uh, it's 9.42. Okay, that was not news or anything. Okay, see, see again, what do I say about order flow? See how we just held this order block? So that's still bullish. So the fact that we just held this order block, that's still bullish, obviously. Again, we held this propulsion block, which this is a propulsion block because this one right here is a propulsion block. This is a propulsion block because we bounce off this order block and we create another order block, so this would be a propulsion block. Um, same thing with right here. We never went below this, did we? Nope. And we never went below this order block right here. So as long as we hold all these solid order blocks, the, the order flow is still bullish. Okay, that's some, something to keep in mind. Um, and that's what I kind of said earlier. And that's why my prediction, I. that's why with my prediction, I haven't really looked for any short setups yet. Um, yeah, I'll check why I am in a second. So to me right now, if we got displacement under this low, which again, it has to be displacement, I would think about taking a short if we got displacement under this low. And the reason being is because we hit the target, we hit 3951, which is technically you could count this as buy side. Why could you count this as buy side? It's because it's, it's the low in this candle. And, and a lot of people, what they do is they put their, a lot of people, they're like, they put their stops above highs, right? There's no high here. This is, this is an old low. But what people do is if we break an old low, they put their stops above the old low, which is why it's still considered buy side liquidity, in my opinion at least. So again, I'm watching this one hour candle, there's 15 minutes left. If we don't get a close above this, then that's not really, again, if we don't get a close above this, then I'm not gonna look for a long setup yet. I'm still looking for shorts off of this. Um, let me check this real quick. Um, no, this is not an S&P right now. Oh, yeah, this is a bullish SMT. You were right. Okay, because we make a higher low right here. And we make a lower low right here. And we make a lower, lower, uh, lower low on. Yes. Okay, so this is a bullish SMT for you guys who don't know. See how he made a lower low and then a higher low in YM? This is the Dow, by the way. So my prediction, okay, it's kind of playing out on NAS right now. So my prediction was we go like this and then reject. So it already played out on NAS, which I I predicted on ES, not on Q. I don't really watch on Q. So we already hit buy side on NQ so far. So Again, that's still another confluence. If we got a short setup, yes, I'll take it. But yes, I'm just gonna stick with what I do because yes, I, I trade yes, not in Q. So yes, I'm just gonna stick with my price target um, of this until I see some sort of unless we see some sort of short setup, obviously. But see how NQ is kind of completing my prediction that I thought was gonna happen, but it's on NQ instead, not yes. Like if I traded NQ, I would have predicted this, but I don't really trade NQ. So we hit buy side. So ES is definitely lagging a little bit because this is, if you if you take like a side by side chart with ES, look. Oops. See the side by side chart. See how. This fair value gap is way up here, and we're not even close to it, but we're close to it. We're like literally in it on ES or on Q. That's a huge divergence. So, if again, if we were to get a short setup here, I'd take it, but I'm just going to stick with my prediction and say we're going to go hit this high in ES. Um, and by the time we did hit this high in ES, uh, I probably, NQ would probably be close to up here, maybe, unless it lags, but. I don't know. You can see you can see my prediction already completed on Q.
I get rid of this? Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is still good so far. We're in this favorite I get now. So, again, if we got the most textbook short in the world right now, I'd still think about taking it. Even though I, even though I'm bullish, even though I'm bullish here, I'd still think about taking it. So now we have an order block right here on the five minute. So to me, this is still, again, we're still a bullish order flow. Um, the thing with this situation is you can't really long up here. I mean, if you accept the risk and you want to try a long like an old order block, then you can try it. But for me, I personally think a short would be much better risk reward. Even though I think we hit buy side, I would much I'd probably not long up here if it was me. Let's say we close above this fair value gap. We go back in this, and then we get another long setup from like, three nine four five ish or whatever then i would maybe think about longing but right here not really There's not really much else to say right now. Uh, I do have someone who sent me their place from yesterday. I was going to go over a little bit maybe. So I'll wait for something to happen. I could do that. Again, on the lower time frame, does, does this look any, does any of this look shortable yet? No. You consider the high of Friday and the high of Monday equal highs. Um, oh, these. Um, not really. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because um, this high was three nine seventy. This high was three. 3971.50. So this one about a point over. I mean, I guess you can consider these relatively equal highs. Um, but we technically took we technically took buy stops by like a point and a half right here, which is good enough for me. If it was in like a less than a one point range, then I would probably consider them relatively equal highs. Or let's say this wick only went to here, then I'd probably consider them relatively equal highs. But it to me, this is not really relative equal highs. Um, to some people, they might be, but to me, like this looks like it took liquidity. Again, this I'm gonna keep this word black marked. I just marked it on the five minute for you guys. This is kind of my point of interest. See how this is a high probability order block because see how the magnitude of this candle just it's very beefy. But would you long it? Absolutely not. Because why? Because we hit this high right here. Okay, as soon as we hit this, or we hit this low right here, as soon as we go above this low, which people have their buy stops or their short stops above, you would not long this. Also, this is really high to be longing. If it works, great. I don't care. So right now, uh, I'm gonna go over these dudes' plays real quick. They're from yesterday. All right, give me one second. I'm just gonna check my Discord chat and for a second. Where to take trade sometime? Market touch for me. Um, 
this guy in my Discord just asked a question in like in like half English. I don't even know how to respond. Just hit daily OB. Um, you can also see this is a volume and balance in the daily. This is why it's another point of resistance. This is not a daily order block. This is just a volume and balance. So Chart Assassin said, I expect price to run up one more time to the hour for really get them break down from here. So yeah, if we did get a short setup, I totally agree. I would definitely short if we got a short here, okay? I'm not saying I'm like I'm not really fully bullish yet until we break above this, but I do have this mark just in case we do. But yeah, I'll I'll would much rather prefer to take a short setup from here if we got it. Um I got a better risk of war than Bobby went a long way up here. It just makes no sense. We're still holding this order block. Yeah, it's probably too us. Was about to do. I totally forgot. What is this line? Oh, this line is buy side. You can see how this line matches up with the mean threshold as well, this order block. That's not really something, that's something to note, but it's not really impor too important to me. It's just another confluence. I have the ESA chart open on the other side of my screen. Um, and I think ESH is a little, it's like a few points higher than ESM right now. Yeah, so ESH is at, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to keep going over these plays real quick. For a short target, what do we have? So if we were to get a short right here, my first target would probably be, let me check. Honestly, there's not really a lot of good targets. Um, we're still bouncing out this OB, as you can see. So if we were to get some sort of short setup here, my first set would probably be this low, maybe. Um, and then this low. And then way down here. Those would be my targets. I'll probably leave a single runner to down there though. But again, the the, book, the order flow is still bullish. We're still, you can see, we're still obviously holding this five minute order block right here. Um, which tells me, again, as long as you hold this, that means we're probably going to go back up and hit this high. Uh, 
Um, you can't really, I don't really think about short targets unless we get a short target. Again, for you guys logging this order block way up here, as long as you accept the risk of logging this order block way up here, it's totally fine to log this order block, especially because the order flow is still bearish and I do expect price to go up more. Okay, but for people who didn't log because of how high you are, you definitely have a little more discipline. But for people who don't care about their win rate and who just care about good risk to reward as long as their win rate's like above 40%, I would say this is a, not a bad play to try. Um, it's just, it's against my rules to take. Um, I would not really buy this high here. But you can see this is pretty high, probably, or blocked it. Um, that I, I'm watching. All right, so let me go over this guy's plays from the other day. Also, if you did long this, your, your stop would probably be a break even now. Um, give me one second. I gotta pull up these guys. Damn, my, uh, my tweet on Twitter, or my Twitter tweet from yesterday night, um, the Align Capital one is, is getting some funny replies. 851 fair value cap to one minute. Um, 851. This one right here? Oh, I see. Oh shit. Okay. See, this is what I, I would have just long this. I'm see I wasn't even on the one minute to even see this. I maybe would have just tried along there. See, this is a long that I would try. I was I thought I was just on the one minute. I I was just on the five minute back center. Oops. So this was this is a setup I'll try. And I'll and as soon as I'm up I'll just want my stop to break even. Um and, and I also like this because one we equal highs here. I was not paying attention to that, unfortunately. It's whatever. I don't really care, but that's a good setup, in my opinion. Uh, it's kind of a bummer I didn't take that, but it's whatever. <coughs> so do you see how, again, this is a confirmation setup. See how we bounce off the f five minute fair value gap right here? We get strong displacement and then another fair value gap. This is a textbook long. I totally see this is a setup I would take taken. Um, fortunately, uh, I was not on the one minute. Um, and we should tag these equal highs in a second. Uh, for my private Discord, I live stream literally every day. Okay, so. I'm really again we just so we took these equal highs. Um, see how we've no displacement over these equal highs yet? I want displacement over this for value gap. Yeah, so if I knew took this good job, I was not paying attention. I thought I was not in the one minute, unfortunately. Um that kind of sucks. TB, I don't think it's time to short yet. Um, I do not see any shorter. Again, I, I would short if we got a lower time frame short setup, but so far there's been zero. I could definitely see us getting like a short out of here maybe, but uh, 
there's not it's gonna take a little bit for a short to form probably Looks like you're 30 seconds behind. Uh, my stream is probably 30 seconds behind for you guys. But you can also speed it up by going to my stream and hitting a uh, two times speed or two times speed. I think. I use PD raises targets. Yeah, so I use PD raises targets too. If if I'm not confident like liquidity is gonna hit, if I'm in the one hour, like I'll use I'll use this for like get for a target just in case we reject it. So see how we're struggling here. Okay, I want to see this. Me this is good for longs because this probably means we're about to compress up. Yeah, there it is. See it? See how I just said. See how I just said that? There's a compression up. And we should hit this high. Man, that really sucks. This was the one textbook play I would have taken. I was not on the one minute at the time. Um, it looks like like this is just a play I'd slap every time. We bounce off the five minute OB. This is the confirmation set up. It's just unfortunate I was not on the one minute for that. It's whatever though. So I want to see this hold. Okay, it's kind of high to long, but again, when we break over this, this is you want to see this hold as an inverse for a rally gap. You do not want to see a close back below this, or else that's bearish. Damn man, I'm so sorry. Did I did anyone catch this? That was like so so textbook. I cannot explain how textbook that was. Uh, my private Discord is closed right now. Um, yeah, I closed it, but I'm open. I'm, the only reason I closed it is because I'm in my last month of my semester, so I'm gonna have a lot of finals. So uh, I'm not really expecting. You caught it, Eric. Nice. See, so yeah, I would expect for you guys who have been doing ICT, I would expect you to catch this. Okay, this is textbook. But for you new guys who saw this in hindsight and didn't see it, this is the play I definitely would have just alerted if I saw it. Um, unfortunately, I was on again. I wasn't on the time frame. But like, I would expect all my guys in my private Discord or most of them who've been in there for a while, I would expect them all to catch this. Again, this is a, you bounce off five minute OB. You're not longing the five minute word block, right? But you see a confirmation set up off it. You see you displacement of this candle because we bounce off a. A higher support area which is the five order block you do not need to see a market structure shift here because we have a energetic displacement up off this five minute for value gap for value gap here and equal highs up here so this could be your first target and then this would be your second target um and i'm actually looking at mes right now mes actually did hit the high and esh hit the high too this is the only thing that did not hit the high just kind of sus Eric, are you holding on your runners? If I were to hold a runner right now, I'd probably hold it for this 3978, which would be another 26 points. And then your stop would just be break even.
Damn, I, I feel really bad. That was like the most textbook long ever. I just feel bad for you newer guys because your newer guys are probably like, oh, I never see these setups in my time. So it's kind of what I said before is if you look at ESH right now, look, ESH hit the high, okay, um, which is taking out liquidity, and um, you can see we did not on ESM. Also, MES took out the high too. So if you're trading ESM on that, then uh, that was just unlucky. <laughs> You can see I, I'm still keeping this for a value gap on my screen. Um, you would not long from it anymore, but you'd want to see it hold. If you're if you're a managing magician here, if I was still long here, I would cut it if we close under this. Uh, yeah. So about my private Discord. Uh, see. I would have cut there if I was in. I don't. I know what their stop, but break even stop would be down here. But this is really not that good. Some people would hold it if they if they got in here. Some people, would, and you were still in a position right here. I would. Obviously, they some people would keep their stop break even still because it's again it's free trade. Who cares? But if I saw us cut through this, I'd probably get out if it was just me. Uh, I switched contracts today, but it's kind of weird because we never actually hit the high in ESM, which I do not like. Um, not getting through BPR. Yeah, I know. So my private Discord again, I have it closed. I'm I'm gonna reopen it again once my semester is open open or over. I'm gonna literally reopen it for like two more days and again it's fifteen dollars per month. Um, and then it's gonna be open for like uh it's gonna be open for probably a day or two with the fifteen dollar price. And whoever gets in that price and all my OG members, they will get that price and then I'll probably end up raising it for the summer because um, there's a lot of people already who pay that price. So if I raise it, I don't want too many more people in because there's a, I get a lot of DMs um, and I love answering them. I know I love answering them, but it takes it, the more people that join, it's very, very hard for me. And yeah, I do, I live trade and I'll do like, so what I do is I point out like the bias and and stuff like that. I do not do as many alerts as I used to. I still do occasionally. Like I'll be like, oh, look for long here, and then we'll get it, and people long, right? Uh, but giving like literally buy at 3948 stop here, um, I stopped doing that as much because some people have different stops, and there was a day where I did this, and some people were like, oh, I stopped out, and some other people were like, oh, I didn't stop out, and I'm, it's just like it's very hard because some people have different rules. So what I do is – a lot of times I just point out, okay, here's the bias, here's you should look for a long here, and then we'll get it, and people are like, oh, and then they post a long after, okay. And then I obviously teach in live time like I'm doing right now and what I kind of look for. Um, but, yeah, I'm not opening again until next month. Yes, Carol. Um, look at it from the 30 second time frame. The retracement to uh, 30 second fair value gap. What do I consider a solid market structure shift? A solid market structure shift is, is something where, so like right here, actually, let me do this. 
like right here. See how we get, okay, we get a low, higher low. There's not really a market structure shift here. This is kind of weird. This is a weird range. It's just a giant wiki range. But like right here, see how we, this this candle, as soon as I see this candle, I'm like, okay, this high is definitely broken. Start looking for long. Yeah, that's Podiac. That's one of the main reasons I started it. Like, I didn't even start it for myself. I started it because I used to join a bunch of discords. Like, I used to be in Masters Discord or whatever, um, which I did not like. And there's too many people doing different things. So I literally dedicated mine only to ICT. So everything in chat is ICT related. A lot of us take the same plays, and it's, like, so nice and reassuring to have other people who know what they're doing to be like, oh, look for long here and like if everyone's on the same page usually it works out you know but yeah solid market structure shift for me is something with where we go at least see see this range right here see how let me just mark a point seven oh five I actually I don't know if I'm gonna explain this right so a solid market structure for me is this is seventy percent of this range okay if we draw this range from this high to this, or this high to this high, a solid market structure to me is when we go back above the, at least 60 or 70% back above what this range was. If we only came up here and then we went down, I'd probably not consider this a solid market structure shift. But because we kind of almost doubled, see how we kind of, this is very hard to explain. See how we, if I draw this line here, um, if you look at this range, this range, if I move these up here, this high, see how we're almost doing the whole thing again? This to me is a solid market structure shift versus like this right here would not be, even though the sun's up working, okay, you can see we bounce off this, this would not be a solid market structure shift for me because this leg to this leg if we move this over we're barely going any percentage of this range so I want to see like at least 50 to 70 percent movement above this range if we don't get it then I don't really consider a solid market structure shift and you'll also by screen time you'll tell by the candles you'll literally tell like okay as soon as you get this candle this is definitely just good displacement all this high we get a fair value gap look for a long same with this see we we after like these two candles i would not consider this a strong micro structure shift but then we get these two i'll be like, okay we're way above this high now this would be a solid micro structure shift um and i do have these equal highs marked i mean my bias i'm still guessing we're gonna hit these and I'm guessing we're going to get to hit this high. I know we already hit this high on ESH, but I think we're going to still hit this. What does five handle for indices on US 500? Five handles on indices for US 500? That's literally just five handles still. So I see how we're 319, 3919. Five handles would be 3919 to 3924, which is up here. This would still be a five handle move on the same thing. But I don't trade US 500. I'm going to check for print charts. It's not that stacked, but I would, if we are going to hit this, I do want to see this hold. Prints are not looking too great here. <clears throat> again, even if this works, if this works and we pump 100 points, I, I don't care. I'm not, again, this is kind of very high to take. Uh, I, occasionally, I'll chase these in options. 
But if you didn't get in long down here, if you didn't get in long down here, if you didn't get long down here, why would you want to chase like the 50 millionth entry? Entry. If you're a lot of disciplined people won't do that. If it works, great. But this will just be when I'm managing my trade. If I'm managing my trade, my stop would probably be a sharp close beneath this. Phantom, Phantom on Twitter, you said PA is trash. DXY moving in sync with the indices and PPI tomorrow. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd stick with demo. I think this PA has been great. I've been able to get a good read on stuff. I mean, my read now is I think we're still going higher, but this was a pretty textbook long. We held this five minute order block. Yeah, Jay Styles. Um, Until we break, until the bullish, until the order flow switches bearish, I do not see any um, short happening soon. The only, if we displace under this, so this is the low match right now. If we displace under this with a lot of displacement and I got a short, that's like the only thing I would probably try to short. Um, if I'm on, if if I'm looking for market structure shift. Um, Usually you can tell in the one minute if it's a market structure shift in the three. So like right here, this is probably one giant candle in the three. You can just tell this is a market structure shift in the three. Same with this. Okay, on the three minute or the five minutes, it's probably gonna be a bigger candle. This low just won't be, this high just won't be as defined in the five minute. So I look at the one minute with keeping the, okay, a higher time frame in mind, which means, okay, this is probably a bigger candle on the five, which is still a good market structure shift. Can you explain when we had to look for a retracement or discount and when the I so IOFEDs, so if you guys don't know what IOFEDs are, IOFEDs are basically when um how do I explain this best I can? Uh, IOFEDs are literally just when we wake a tiny bit into a free value gap and then end up rejecting. Let me see if I can find a good example. So like right here, this would be an IOFED. The thing with IOFEDs is you can't really predict them from what I've seen, okay? Uh, with IOFEDs, you know this is a fair value gap. This is an IOFED. You cannot predict this unless that's where your entry is. So if I'm looking for an entry and you want to be sure you're going to get in, you have to put your your so you have to enter right here. And then you have to this would be your target. But the thing with this is your risk reward would be much worse versus if you're looking for a CE entry, so consequent encroachment, okay? Your risk reward would be much better here but you might not get filled and this is with iofed you have to put your limit right at the start of the free value gap just in case the the iofed happens not like a breakaway gap breakaway gap is a little different actually most of this is a breakaway gap besides up here the only reason i could classify this as a breakaway gap is because when we break this old free value gap up here we do not want to see us go back below it so this part this part in the yellow right mark this is the breakaway part of the book app where you do not want to see this retrace to so like right here. Yes, exactly. So IFED stay again we wick it up into above the fifty percent and bounce before hitting discount. A lot of times it's just right in the it's like a few ticks in the free value gap. But yeah, with IOFED, the risk reward is gonna be worse if you wait for them because you're gonna enter right when you tick into the free value gap and your risk reward is gonna be worse. Yes, a breakaway gap doesn't go back to it. But there's parts of a fair value gap where some parts might be a, a breakaway gap where you do not want to see the lower half of the fair value gap retrace to. Okay, see what happens. So my prediction just completed. We held this BPR and we hit these equal highs. 
See, this is why I'm not I'm not bearish yet. My prediction of us hitting this buy side is still in the works. This would obviously be my first target, probably. Um, I'd probably just hold a runner for up there if I could. See how, like, even though I would have taken a short setup if we got it. So far, we've gotten zero short setups. We only got a textbook long setup, which was right here. Okay, that's something to be aware of. Must overlap with another fair value gap. Uh, an IO fed does not have to. All an IO fed is is we just so like let's say. Um, one second, I want to check the prints here. All an IO fed is is. See how we just wicked this fair value gap, then we kind of reject. This is the institutional order flow of drill entry where we don't fully fill the fair value gap, we just tick into it and then we reject. It does not have to overlap with another fair value gap. I get this is here, but it does not have to overlap with us. It doesn't really matter. Weird CE of that one minute fair value gap right now. Okay. Uh, actually, not quite. We have three more points. Also, does anyone know what this line is? This zone? Why did we reject it twice and why did we bounce off this? See how this is more advanced, but see how we just bounce off this fairy value gap? I wouldn't really take this fairy value gap, but but does anyone know why this you, you could take this fairy value gap? It's because of the zone right here. What is the zone? I'll give you a hint. It's from your daily, I'm pretty sure. Daily volume balance, yes, exactly. And it might also be a fair, it might also be a new week opening gap or new day opening gap, but same thing. Yes, exactly. So this is the daily volume balance I drew a little bit ago. Okay, so you can see I have it drawn. See how much we respect it? I'm putting out a volume and balance video soon. No, you would not long off it, but you can see just this very value gap overlaps with this daily volume and balance. If you were in a position, you just want to see this hold. Um, but yeah, you can see how like you can see how algorithmic that is. And and because this is a daily volume and balance, look, we now have equal lows, which. Because this is the daily volume balance, when we have a strong close below it, you do not want to see this retrace to you. This would be a breakaway gap because there's some there's some f form of another PD array on the daily time frame right here that's above this old fair value gap. So if you were bullish, you would not want to see this retrace to because we already broke the daily volume balance. You would want to see this hold. And now we have, equal low, we have equal lows right here, so it's kind of contradicting. Um, I mean, I guess we could do something like this. Oops. Maybe go right under, then hold them. But chances are, if you're tracing to this sort of value gap, I mean, I, I get like it would be the last line of fence and it could work, but ideally, you wouldn't really want this to trace to.
So the answer is a daily volume imbalance. Yeah, I don't use a stop loss that's more than five handles. If there's a play that has, if if I shorted right here, see how the stop would be right here? Like, let's say I just want to short right here. The stop, this would be a 10-point stop. I just would not take this play because the stop is too big for me. If we get a, if we get something like this, Oops. If you get something like this where the stop would be less, so this would now be the new stop, then that that's a play I'd think about taking. Versus if I shorted right here, it wouldn't make sense for me to short because the stop is kind of still big. Um, so if those broke down. Yes, if if we if we broke down and sh cut sharply below this, my bias would switch to bearish, but it's not bearish because you can see we just held that daily volume balance and this fair value gap, so it's still bullish. Okay, and as long as we hold this on bullish, we should hit this. This would be my final target. Um, we have another five minute order block right here on the five minute time frame see how this gap lines up with this order block I feel like that gives me more confluence for maybe you were lowing there if the bias is still bullish but you wouldn't want to see it. You you'd, you'd probably just want to see a wick, not a close, because if we close back under this daily volume balance, that would not be great. And this is me using a daily volume balance as an inverse. I bet you if I I bet you ICT like doesn't even know that this is here, this daily volume balance. But like, I like to keep these old things in my chart because you will see a, a lot of confluence with this stuff. ICT hasn't tweeted since we hit three nine five one. 3951 was just my partial target. I still would want to see this hit 3971. Again, if we do get a short, I'll still short, but this would be my final target right here. Actually, no, this would be 3978. On EU. Um, so right now, see how we took sell side right here? This would have been an entry right here. So EU, this would have been an entry. You take sell side, you break above this, create a BPR, and now we have some low resistance liquidity forming, which I want to see acceleration through in a moment here. Uh, that's literally the only thing I see in hindsight, but... This wasn't bad. This is way this morning though. I don't I don't trade forex. I I tried it at one time. I was not. I think I put a hundred dollars in the forex account. I made like five bucks, but it was too slow for me, so I just stopped trading it. I didn't really like trading it that much.
Yeah, this is the only valid entry I've seen, and I don't really like these equal lows very much. But um, I hate I hate longing, and then we get something for equal lows because I'm always nervous we're going to go back down and hit this. So ideally, right here, this would probably this would be another breakaway gap because when we break this above this fair value gap and create this BPR, you do not really want us to go below this BPR. Can you guys do me a quick favor? I'm gonna post a tweet, a tweet in chat. Go like it real quick. It's a, it's one of my replies to this guy on Twitter that he's he was making fun of ICT and being like, oh, ICT's trash, whatever. All right, go to the link and, and like it real quick. If you guys all like it, we might be able to ratio him. I still don't like how there's these equal lows down here. I mean, it's good we're staying above them, but this will probably be used as a later target. I'm hoping we somehow hit buy side first. So someone in my Discord in my Discord said they tried to the nine forty nine for really like, yeah, it stopped out. Wow so why would you not short this for like gap? I literally said it. This is the favorite gap we shorted. If we get a long if we bounce out the five minute order block, right? Five minute order block is right here. And we get a confirmation long right here, where where would the target be? Just delete this stuff. So if we go back in time and we long this, where is our target? Yeah, so there's a five minute bullish order block, which means what? The bullish the bullish or the order flow is still bullish at this time because this is the five minute order block. Okay. Exactly. So you're because the because we're holding these order blocks, there's still no the order flow is still bullish. So when we get this long here, your target's up here. If you go to my Twitter model, every single time we get some sort of long, where's the target? The target's already buy side, so it's up here. So even though this fair value gap is here, I'm expecting us to break through it, use the support like we did in this, and then hit this high. Exactly, 948 high, perfect. So if you ever see this, then then what happens? This fair value gap is totally irrelevant because we get a structure shift, we get a, a high under direct displacement up here. Okay, this is higher under direct displacement. We're bouncing off five order block. We long here. This Yes, you can't take partials here, but if your target ideally should be this high, this order block would, this fair value gap would be irrelevant. Okay, so should come. This is where I start looking for acceleration. There's about seven more points.
So you can see right now, where are we? We're in this one hour for a bad gap. I'd probably be down to just runners here. Uh, we need to close above the CE. I'm trying to explain to people why this they're talking they're all talking about this long right here they said it would be a risky long because we took buy side this would not be a risky long because we we saw we held this five minute order block which means the order flow is still bullish and we got a confirmation entry so this would not be risky Um, I sent that Michael, I sent the tweet in chat. Alright, so the chart assassin. What you're saying to me is what you're saying to me is look at the summer fifteenth and sixteenth. Okay, I will. So you're talking about right here. You're trying to find a, yes, this should become support. You're trying to find a bunch of reasons for us to reject here. As soon as, as soon as I see these buy sides, I'm not really looking for price to reject here. The market should go full force into these, into these highs. So yes, I'll be looking for this to be used as support now. And, and, and wow, this, just the sheer accuracy of this see how this was from this is a daily volume gap or volume balance from december 15th to december 16th right we do not get a single close under this after we break above it okay and we just said internal liquidity these are just again these are just potential five move five handle moves you could be taking okay i kind of drew that late but like see how we just don't we never get a close under and then we just said internal buy side that's four points right there almost five but it's just crazy same with like right here also notice how I'm not even watching DXY today I don't care about what DXY is doing because I I've had a pretty good read on ES all day okay so you don't need DXY if you know where ES is gonna go I don't, I don't care what this is doing right now
Yeah, again, if you're watching DXY on a day like today where I have, again, we still have not hit buy side, but even even if I, like, me think we hit buy side, there's still plenty of long moves. Like, you saw you saw this morning, I, I literally said to you guys, okay, I literally said my prediction is we go up and hit buy side. But I said if we were to get a short, I would short it, but we never got a short, did we? So my prediction is still in play right now, okay? And because of that, I already had a good read on ES. And you can see, even if even if we don't end up putting buy side, you can see you could have still caught a lot of moves way up to here, okay? There's still plenty of move to be caught up here, okay? It's literally since I said I was bullish, we're up like almost 30 points already. So like that's still that's still really good for me. Um, and that's as I said my buy this morning. And, and did I use e DXY for any of that? Nope. So, yeah. This is a really old volume balance. We're still holding it, but um, it's kind of crazy. This is still really high. There's like, some people wonder why you never get pullbacks. Like, and, and this situation, I don't know if you get a pullback. Even though I'd want a pullback here, I think going back under this volume balance would not be the greatest. I don't think that would be good if you went back under this. Um, but I would not be surprised if he went to retest his order block. But you can see as long as we, like, we're just holding this old volume imbalance, which is just crazy, crazy algorithmic. That's, that's, if you ever wonder why don't we get pullbacks, that's, that's the reason why, okay? It's these old PD rays we break above and we use them all as support. I used to wonder the same thing, and then one day it just kind of clicked for me. And I started drawing these old PD rays, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, we broke, we broke above this, and we use it as support. So you can see we're still holding this. This is just crazy. That was another five handle move. Wow. See, this is where it just it just totally clicks. Everything just makes sense. This is an old volume bounce. I get yes, we have equal lows. So like it, you could have just still longed here and then you just would have gotten out here. That's another four point move. But like even we have equal lows inside of daily volume balance, so you do not want to see these retrace you in the first place. That is just crazy. I'm not gonna lie, I, 
I am up five points right now from this. Um, I took a small long off it. Um, my stop, I already sold one. My stop for the other was just a break even now. Uh, my final target for the last contract is up here at 7 8. Um, we'll see if we get it. It's really hard. I don't want to alert to you newer guys. This is very advanced. This is a very, very advanced entry. Like, you should not be doing this. When I was new to ICT, I would have never entered here. Um, but yeah, this is my target right now. This would be my final target, as I said before earlier in stream. Uh, I'm 20. Also, this would be another order block. Yes, I, I see the divergence. Uh, I'll point it out in a second. There's 17, nice. So we're still inside this for valley gap on NAS. Um, we're getting a buck. We're getting to the BPR soon. I uh, just kind of hit it. This is where I'd be very, very cautious along in ES. Remember how I said, even though I want these on ES, I kind of want NAS to lag a little bit because NAS lagging here means what? That means ES can still hit the high and we can still reject others for valley gap. Yeah, I love CPI. Like I, if you guys saw when I first got in the chat, I predicted this. Okay, and I didn't care CPI, which today my I mean obviously my wick down was a little too short. Okay, but you can see I got the direction right after. Up, I'm now up six points from this long right here. Let's see if I can we hit the target.
this is where I want to see. Like, I want to see. We're only four points away. Um, acceleration would be good, but I feel like acceleration for four points is kind of far. It's up and up now. ICT reincarnated. We're most likely going to the Daily City created March 9th. Okay. Yes, that's what I've been saying all day. That's why I've had buy side marked here, because if we break this, we're going to be in this. And then I'll start looking for short up here. This is where it gets a little like, little choppy. I can see it's going down here, then going back up. Um, again, if you were in a position, I'd probably mostly be out here already. Um, I already got out one of my cons. I already sold at five points. The other one, to my stops, it just said break even. I don't really care what happened to that one. All right, so let me check footprints. This does not look that great in footprints. Actually, it doesn't look bad, but. It does look like I will get stop break even. Um, we will see. This is why I said it could get dicey here. Or when, usually when we get, so this is what I, I've gone over this in a video. When we get very close to buy side, but we don't hit it, we're four points off right now. All this BS happens where we go down, it's more smart when he gets in, then we go back up. Um, this is a low risk sell. Okay, it's not high, it's not high probability. This is not high probability, but it is low risk. And then my target would probably be these equal lows. Okay, there's equal lows. <clears throat> See, that was a very, that was a quick entry. Um, I'd probably leave runners to these equal lo lows down here. Let's see if we 
hit them. See, this is why, um, like, if I was, this is why it gets really risky longy up here because, like, I'm lucky I got five points off of this, but I was scared of these equal lows a little bit. Um, I said that this would probably be used as a price target later. Ideally, the protected low right now, look at the five minute. The protected low is is under this order block. I would, if I think we're going to go up and hit buy side, I would not want to see back on this order block, okay? Did anyone just um, short this at all? Do you see why I keep note of these equal lows? These are triple equal lows. Um, we should hit them, I'm guessing. That's why I keep them in my chart because of this. Even though I'm bullish, like you can't fade those equal lows. So a few people in my Discord did catch that. Ready? This is where see how this is the fair value gap. It's also a fair. It's also the steady behind balance. Um, I would want to see us reject here to go hit these equal lows. know what to say anymore just kind of watching we still buy a set above here um, so even if we don't hit these equal lows I still wouldn't want to short with buy a set above still it's just against our rules even if we don't end up hitting buy side today my guess is we will. I still wouldn't really feel comfortable shorting this. Um, I don't know. That's just me. Some people would short this. Some people wouldn't. At the end of the day, it's up to your experience and your screen time and whether what your win rate is. If you're on like a ten, if you're like a ten win streak, yeah, I might short this. But if you're trying to be as consistent as possible, taking high probability trees only, I probably would not short this. Okay, I get we have these equal lows below here, but to me, this higher buy side is going to trump these equal lows. Um, in my opinion, like this is going to definitely trump. Let's see.
So ideally what I'd be looking for here is a close above this free value gap, which we've not got, and then use this free value gap as support. That would tell me what? That would tell me we're going back up here. But so far we get we got no fit we got no close above this free value gap. This is just a textbook. This is just okay, this free value gap you'd short. Uh, because the equal lows below we just hit premium um, I probably wouldn't just do anything in this situation here it's just 250 50 for me I could definitely see us going both ways here gun to my head I think we go up here but I doesn't matter I could be wrong do not if I ever say like oh I think we go up here if I ever say anything like that and you're in an opposite side position as me, please do not cut your position, okay? I asked a I asked a person yesterday, or I posted a thing yesterday in my chat and I said, would you short this for a value gap? And it made it sound like, oh, I wouldn't. But it was a trick question. It depended on people's rules. And someone was in a short position. And I said, "Would he short this?" And he thought, and he almost canceled this thing, and it ended up working out at the end. And I said, "Well, it depends on your rules because um, we had equal lows below, but we also already hit sell side." So, mark ten forty five and ten forty six. One minute volume and balance. Okay. Yep, so we got this one right here. So this will be another volume balance that I want to see a break above and then hold a support. Uh, Nathan, not really. Not until I hit like a certain goal of mine. And then I do. So gun to my head, I was correct. But that does if you take a short here, okay, just because I said I think we go up here, that does not mean shit. You should not have closed your position just because I said that, okay? I'm just saying what I think is gonna happen based off my screen time and my experience. Should hit this. So if you take a loss in that short, journal this trade. Okay, and, and 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 ask yourself why I wouldn't short that. Or ask yourself why I said I wouldn't short that, okay? The main reason being I believe this trumps these equal lows. Okay, um we've not hit the highs yet. So now what I want to see is I want to see this use as support. If we do not use this as support, we will definitely go back down and hit these equal lows. And I know it's like, oh, that's obvious. Obviously, break this, we're going to go hit this low, these lows. But if we do not use this as support, you can still catch a move if we break under this. It's still a five-point move. It's still like a five-point move if we break this because you know where the target is. So it's not like optimal trade entry is not so optimal. <laughs> Yeah, Adam, do you understand why I said I wanted to short that?
Yes, exactly. Now it's in green. No shorting when equal highs or above. Rule. Yes, I have a rule. I, I have a rule I posted on Twitter. I said I don't short when I equal highs above or equal lows below. I don't long with equal lows below. I don't short with equal highs above. In this case, it's different because these equal lows formed at a very key spot, which is an old daily volume imbalance. So it's different in this case. The momentum of the red can to me. Um, it looks like these are very high momentum. This is where I like to see acceleration. Why? Because there's a bunch of old short orders order sitting here. These should all get stopped out. This is when you see the giant candle, usually. So like if you look at a footprint chart right now, you see the delta is 238. This is where I like to see like a 500 to 1,000 delta candle here. See how like right here we dump and then 500, 500. We just totally uh, ignore this giant down candle. Again, I just use this as a tool. I'll fade these if I know where buy side or sell side is. Uh, but this is where I start looking for decent amount of volumes coming here like 500 to 1000 yeah I, I've been doing ICT for almost a year so you have a lot more to go come on see you can see there's a, too many sellers here they gotta squeeze them out watching this number there it is see it 393 400 500 boom see that Delta come in this is exactly what I was looking for boom 700 see that okay and buy side should hit any moment um, see how we held this for a really cap as well Ideally, I would not want to see back below this for a value cap. I want to. I'd rather hit buy side here, and then we would need a lot of acceleration to go through here. You can see this is the footprint chart. Um, some of that delta was shut down a little bit. It was like 800 now to 500, but it's still not still bullish in my opinion. Uh, it's on my footprint chart. It just shows it shows volume, but in terms of numbers. So I don't have a volume chart at the bottom of my screen, but volume does tell you a lot. If you see a major volume going through an old fair value gap, that likely means your bias is probably wrong. If you are, if you do the opposite bias. I like how these equal highs are formed now. 
that's a double top. It's like a double top in a micro time frame, but it's still, still important to know. So we just took those equal highs. Okay, there it is. Boom. Four more points. I really hope everything is coming together for you guys. And why I would have short that. Again, that's the old me 100% would have shorted this, okay? I If you're new and you shorted that, don't feel bad. That's a trade that I used to journal all the time where I would have shorted that, okay? But again, like I said, this is going to trump these equal lows. Still wouldn't so you said you wouldn't consider shorts even with the if this buy side gets swept. If this buy side gets swept, I would consider shorts if we got a textbook short. I would really consider shorts if we broke this up here. Okay, what does that mean? That means we're now in the daily fair value gap. I would see if we get any sort of short setup from up here. If we don't get one, it doesn't matter. I just won't short, but see how See how we get very close to buy side, but then we have this dump. This is so more smart money can get in before you actually hit the target. Oh yeah, the one that got swept. No, no, no. I would not consider short like. No, so you would not short. If we just hit this and didn't hit this, I would not short, okay? This is just internal buy side. Like, this is just internal buy side. Yes, I agree. All right, you guys, almost there. I think the first, I did a YouTube stream like two weeks ago. I think my bias was wrong. Or no, my bias is right. It just it was just more choppy than this. But like, you can see how spot on my bias was today. Okay, this is how it is, I would say 80% of the days. Okay, a lot of new ICT traders, they probably were like, oh, short this for a value gap, short this for a value gap, okay? And they're probably all getting destroyed. Okay, but you guys are watching my experience Okay, this is all based off my experience. This is what you're watching. You're not watching me look for these plain 22 entry models that you first learn. Okay, those are a good start, but finding liquidity, this is the hard part. And a lot of newer guys would be like, they'd probably think we're going to reject this for a value gap right here. Okay, and I totally get why you might think that, but um, there's more reasons. There's there's more reasons for us hitting this, in my opinion. Imagine we just hit right here, we just drop 100 points and we never hit this, that would be crazy. You can see in the five minute, got another order block. The reason why it's important to note these order blocks is because see how the high see the high probability candle of this. Again, this is the manipulation of the market. This order block on the higher time frame is just consolidation. This is the manipulation, this giant dump. This is manipulation so smart money can get back in, and you see it in the form of an order block. See that? 
that's like a clear clear that's a quote i was trying to explain earlier so now that we have this order block here what do you want to see after order box form do you want to see expansion up which totally makes sense because our bias is bullish and because we just formed this order block and because this order block was closed like 20 minutes ago this is where you want to see expansion up You can tell the volume is dropping off a little bit here based off these candles. As soon as we hit this, um, I'm probably gonna, and eh, maybe I'll go. I'll see. I'll see how much we if we do hit this. Okay, I'm not saying we will, cause that thing's guaranteed, obviously. But if we do hit this, I'm gonna see with how much acceleration we go over if we do, and I'll probably just end my stream after we hit this. Um, someone asked me the other day, like, um, would you consider looking for short here if we don't hit here first? And I literally said, I go, yeah, this is a major enough where I would look for short, but it'd be more, it would probably be better to look for short if we hit up here first. Okay, so you can see clearly how this fair for value gap, this four minute fair value gap. See if we hit this. This is where it just like gets dicey because um, I said that word 50 million times already in the stream, but this is where like if we don't accelerate here, you could see another dump. Um, ideally, you want us to accelerate here though. to my footprint chart right now. Yep, FOPA. Come on, two more points. Okay, so we just made equal highs there. <clears throat> we should blast through them in a second.
See, this is what I, I teach people in my Discord. I say, don't put your limit. I say, don't put your limit right at the high, just in case this happens. I say, put it 0.75 below. Oops, that just happens when I open something. So you can see we hit the target, uh, but I think we're probably gonna end up blasting through them. Uh, yes, it is. It is better to trade. This is the new contracts, so all the volume to on these. Okay, there it is. Okay, you can see the target now hit. So this is where you take 99% of your position, maybe leave one up here. There's only six more points. learned it so I never said this in like I put in my discord earlier I said this is my prediction um, so I just gotta update that real quick in my discord what's up William type so if you guys caught any of this move okay using my bias and me saying I I, I think we're gonna hit this if you caught any of that Type one in chat, I'm curious. Wait, that's butters? Buddy? <clears throat> nice. Nice. Okay, here's the here's the thing. So do you do you guys see how this is this is external buy side, right? Uh, this is external buy side. Once we hit internal, this is pretty close. Where we could definitely see a hefty rejection off from here. Okay, because this is a big enough. This is, see how significant this high is. It's also relative equal highs, as I said. It's not. I wouldn't really consider them equal highs, but I guess they're relative equal. Because of that, I probably wouldn't hold much past here. Um, I think I could see a big pullback come here. And not hit this for a while you know so it's definitely risky holding past this even though i still think we're gonna hit this at some time um hey see that makes me so happy guys <laughs> I'm not sure why. So you can see ICT earlier. He never said we we're gonna hit this. He, 
I feel like it's different for him. Now that he's so many followers, I feel like he's scared to say this level because if you don't hit it, then it's whatever. So he calls more of the low hanging fruit now. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, dude, it makes, it, it makes me so happy to see like random people, and I'm sure some of you guys probably play with a lot more money than I do. I'm just like a 20 year old kid in college, okay? I'm not, I don't play that much money yet, but like, it feels so good because like I know, like we're taking money away from these markets, you know? It feels so good. It just makes me so happy. funded account no so I actually failed my first funded I was $500 away from the price target or whatever um, I was $500 away and I ch failed because the trailing stop got me um, I don't really I would rather trade my own account I get why people like funded but Do you mean my like my paid Discord? Or just my normal Discord? Because you can get in my normal Discord. Michael, do you need my paid Discord, like my paid thing, or my, um, like just my Discord in general?
Michael, I would answer your question, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. So we just got we're we're at eleven thirty right now. Um, if you guys know, there's a um, if you guys know, there's a macro. I think eleven fifty to twelve ten. So what that basically tells me is during those macro times, if you might the paid Discord, uh, probably not for another month. What I normally do is I live stream in my Discord channel, and lately I've been getting to 50 viewers, and there's only 50 people can view my screen, so another person has to share. Um, yeah, so I all for my paid one, all I do is I live stream in my Discord, in my actual Discord, and lately I've been hitting them 50 max viewers or whatever. Um, so. What can, or, or what I want to say, we've been hitting the max viewers, and someone else has to screen share. So the thing is, if I like, if you guys really want to join and you really, really like, you thought this helped you a lot or whatever, and you're willing to put in the work and grind, if you could D, like, if you want to DM me and tell me about yourself, tell me like, what you like your trading experience or whatever I might I could open up a few spots uh, but like for publicly I'm not opening up I'm not opening up until like until my semester ends in like a month and a half but if you're if you want to put in the work and you're willing to um, do that then I'll just DM me on Twitter um, I guess but you're, I'm, you're gonna have to tell me like about your experience and what you've, how much ICT you've watched, whatever. Uh, but like with my paid one, I used to give like straight up alerts, um, a lot. Like I would give like I, I one month I had like twenty eight wins and five losses, I think. And I had to stop doing that because too many people joined and and they wouldn't understand like my rules versus their rules sometimes they get stuffed out and I wouldn't and then they like would complain like oh you didn't get stuffed out like or I got stuffed out and you didn't whatever so it's hard harder now so now really what I do is I point out the bias I I point out what to look for like if there's like an order block go big okay look for a confirmation long after you got this order block like earlier and then we got this clean set up here without like straight up alerting it but But I, I emphasize more on as long as you're understanding what's going on in the market, that's what I care about most. Uh, I do cybersecurity. This is where the volume gets really bad. The eleven fifty macro comes up in, in ten minutes, so ideally in the next thirty minutes I'd want this high to be hit.
let's say a good order example, order block example in the chart. So if you look at the five minute, any of these red candles before these up moves are good order block examples. So right here, right here, right here. See how right here, all these red candles before these pumps up. See how we keep holding all of them? So ideally, even though this is my final target, it's probably going to take some time. Um, we'll see what happens when the macro time hits, but uh, yeah. draw that old volume and balance. I want to see where that is. I think it was on the daily, I believe. Yeah, no problem. So by macro, I mean like there's there's something called macro times where it's like 9.50 to 10.10. And during those times, price likes to make a run on liquidity during those like, specific times. So that's usually when you start to see some volume comes in. So if I go on my Discord. Um, uh, I think it's in my study channel. So these are the macro times that I have. Um, I think there's one more I don't have here. And usually for consolidating before these macro times, usually that's when you see when we hit during those times, that's when you see like a, a jump in price to where if, if your target's like up here, that's when I would expect the run up there. So notice I we have these equal highs up here. This volume bounce here. Uh, and I'm not drawing this just because this is hindsight and we just rejected off this. I'm drawing this because I would look for a break above this and then use this as an inverse. Okay, I don't care that we're rejecting right now. I never would have shorted this anyways. Probably gonna end it here, guys. Um, yeah, go check that out on Discord. I'm probably gonna end it here. 
I'm pretty sure there is an example chart actually Discord of this. Right here. I'm pretty sure you can show custom time based lines. This was every macro time in one of the days. See, we got a big move here, big move here, big move here, and then we got a big move here, and then another big move here. These pink zones are the macro times. All right, well, I'm going to end it here, guys. Um, I appreciate everyone for coming in. I hope I helped you today. Um, how to get the e-money up on TradingView. For the e-money, just type in ESM2023. And if you don't have live data, you could go to us500.f. The prices are still different, though. They should change soon. I think they'll change after Friday. But. All right, well, if you guys have any questions, make sure to join my Discord, DM me, or whatever. Um, but, yeah, other than that, I'll see you all later. Peace.